Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today on billet order, looking at the order that billets exist within the feature tree. Sort of rule of thumb is that you have sort of draft features and then follow those by uh, fillet features, but sometimes that can lead to uh, sort of undesirable uh, forms, resultant forms, where you have um, edges converging or intersecting each other. So this is a sort of example piece of placeholder geometry so we can have a have a play with the fillets and if I add fillets here you can see what happens as I, I'll just roll back I have these edges here converging got one two three four edges and when you try and fillet this and it doesn't really matter you can try changing your order of your fillets as you put them on but you always end up with um, some undesirable results that's cause just just basic the basic geometry of it. Uh, the surface here should actually be aiming for a tangent point on this fillet, um, rather than than ending at the theoretical edge. So there are ways around it, which I will uh, cover in a second. Yeah, so it's pretty self-explanatory there. So this fillet really you want to read this fillet coming down sort of uninterrupted right underneath the top of the arch surface here so i'm going to save a copy of this and i'm going to roll back and have a quick look at how i model it otherwise okay so i'm going to delete these features I'm going to keep that sweep there uh roll back to the beginning of this this model originally i'd modeled it like this and then had the the lower surface separate so what i'm going to do is i want to basically end up with this surface and this surface made first so i can pre-apply the um, fillet on the outside there so i'll just edit these sketches that gives us this surface uh, and then I'll change this to be the convex surface okay so what I've got to do is pre-apply a fillet to this edge here. So we've got to do that before we make the second revolve. I'm just going to use tangent fillets rather than uh, curvature continuous. You can do this with curvature continuous as well. So I'll pick that edge and then we'll... 1.5 millimeters, And then in the next... It just fallen over because it's lost its reference, which is fine. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to make the end point of this arc coincident to our fillet we just made and also make it tangent. Okay, so when that revolves now, you can see what's happening there. So that's tangent between the surface and the fillet. If I continue on, I'm going to reinstate the split uh, on the top here. Instead of a split line, we'll just do a trim because the surface is on its own now. And delete the split line. Delete face. So I'm going to insert surface trim, keep the middle section there, and then I'll probably have to fix up the sweep. The sketch has lost its reference. Incident. You can see I've just got to put a minimal draft on the arcs there to add a slight bit of reality to what I'm doing. 
Okay, and then edit the surface sweep because it's lost its path. That's just the edge there. And I've got keep normal constant, so I've got that one degree of draft, and it continues all the way along. Okay, so now I'm going to trim these back up. So I'm going to use this body to trim the section. Then I'm going to knit these together. Um, I could use these surfaces here, like this, trim with those, and then keep the selection here. But because this surface and this surface are converging to tangent along this line, I don't like doing that. Sometimes you can see some waves or some other uh, unwanted sort of artifacts happening. So when you've got two surfaces coming to tangent and one surface is trimming the other, it's, it's, it's sometimes better to go insert a 3D sketch and then convert entities on the edges of that surface that's the trim tool. So that way it's only ever going to trim it with the actual edges. So now if I go trim, got 3D sketch selected and I can keep um, those sections. And now I can, I'm going to make a planar surface on the bottom. And knit this together. And mirror it over twice. And knit them together. I'm going to solidify. I keep, oh, we'll go back into that knit and turn on merge entities, get rid of these splits in the revolved surfaces and insert boss base thicken right solid i prefer to add that rather than doing it in the surface nut because if you've got a big model it's much easier to interrogate where the thicken is if it's a separate feature it doesn't really add more time to it um right so we can see now if i turn off the edges that fillet reads constantly around here i know it gets um Cut off by the by the arch surface, but that's that's okay. So if I was to go back and add these fillets now, we shouldn't end up with this lump here. You can see there that goes and runs upwards where it gets to the arch surface and down again. Okay, and thicken that, so you can see the results much sort of much cleaner because the geometry doesn't have a lump on it as it comes to the uh, where the edges converge or they where they intersect. Um, you can clean up these these fillets a bit better if you wanted to using the. Um, I'll show you. I'll do it quickly. We'll just roll back. Um, I'm just going to chop an area out and use the old delete face tangent surface fill trick. Um, I've created a plane through here because we want to chop this piece of the fill it off. We'll go insert curve foot line intersection. And now I'm going to insert face delete, delete and fill with tangent fill on, and then pick all these. And it will put in one surface there instead. You know, edges off, sort of tie these things up a bit, and then we can just roll forward again. Yeah, so as I said, you can use this um, with curvature continuous fillets as well. Um, it's just the difference of having this fillet back in the tree because the geometry that comes after it really needs to refer to what this fillet is doing. So it makes sense to. Uh, do things earlier in the tree. You're not breaking any rules. It's um, you want to get the result that you want to get rather than what like a resultant sort of thing going on like this. Um, it's a much better way to do it. 
here's another example of where using fillets earlier uh, before other features is a good idea. So say this is a rib and the rib or the, the, the diverging wall here is sharing a common edge. Um, you'll end up with the same problems as before, like if I try and put fillets on. So say and then add fillets along here. Doesn't really matter which way you approach it, uh, you're going to end up with sort of a not non-ideal result because this surface is aiming to a virtual edge that's been eroded um, and it's approaching at a different angle from this face. So again, you've got to put the fillet on first or the blend, if it's a variable blend or whatever the surface and then and then work backwards. So it's like back to the future. So in this case, you just go before the, the boss here was added The side on, let's make it curvature continuous this time. Side on the fillet you want there. Make it maybe a bit larger. Curvature continuous, and then you add the boss afterwards. So now we go in and we edit boss here, because um, we need to make this arc tangent to. Um, it. So I will probably have to delete this entity here. Coincident and then tangent. Oh, won't we? Yeah, no, we'll do tangent. I was going to say I'll try doing curvature continuous, but um, no, let's not. And then I'm going to run a line across there and trim these. Okay, and we've deleted the entity on the bottom and we go OK. And there already we've got to see the, the tangent font showing on that edge. So that's a good start. And now let's try adding some fillets. I think I'd use two millimeters down the sides. And then fill at the top. our edges off. Okay, so you can see that's much better uh, than I'll bring up the old one than that. So that's not really a desirable result there to have this this edge along here with the fillet on it being interrupted with this lump. Um, I think that's probably much more um, desirable result. As you can see, that fillet there is uninterrupted uh, and then it runs tangentially into this face. So this is a... I've, I've made this sort of thing set with... Imagine this um, this being a blend that's been made manually and it's uh, running in 3D space. So sweeping along other geometry kind of thing. Um, curved and then I've had to split that face and then run ribs or other geometry offer and it works okay um it's just it's just a different way of approaching things so rather than just being happy with what what resultant geometry you get it's 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 good just to understand these other ways to approach um these these things so you can you can get what you want rather than what the computer sort of serves up i think i'll i'll leave this here for now um rather than going in depth on like a more advanced piece of geometry um showing you the concept so yeah don't be stuck thinking that fillets go on afterwards uh near, to, near the end of the feature tree you know if you have to put one on earlier go for it um there's no hard and fast rules there but uh just make sure you end up with the with the geometry you actually want to get rather than what the computer thinks you need all right I'll wrap this up. Thanks a lot. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Have a good day. See ya.